The A to Z Show. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. The A to Z Show. And Alan, I seen that. You have three different YouTube channels, correct? Mm-hmm. You have the ATZ show. Let me explain and hear me this. Is that right? Hear me out. Hear me out. That's that's the one yeah. I haven't checked out because I, I'm like I have the worst taste in music. The uh-huh. the the people who make music for the the top forty charts. It's like me specifically. I'm just way too yeah. lazy to get into. You just like the mainstream stuff. Yeah, that's that's. A, I mean, I've kind of gotten the similar thing when I was making uh, videos on the ATZ show for music, and people were like, "I don't like I don't like your music taste. Just give me your movie taste." So then I would obviously do the movie taste, and then people would be like, your movie taste sucks, give me your music. You can't always please everybody. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, specifically, uh, the Hear Me Out page was just to cover a lot of albums that I wasn't doing, like, these huge thematic breakdowns on the A to Z show, right? Like, there'd be an album, and I'm like, yo, there's a lot to dissect in this album. And then, you know, like, I don't know, a Shawn Mendes album or another, like, rap album would come out. I'm like, all right, there's not really a lot to dissect in Amigos album. So I'm like, but people still wanted to hear my thoughts. So hear me out kind of became that. I, I, I call it the uh, the music version of Let Me Explain. Now that uh, Let Me Explain, people kind of get what that is. Yeah. So I kind of just refer to it as that. What what got you into the ATZ show started first, right? Yeah, that's been like four or five years running. What got you into doing that? What was the thing that started that off? I, I got really big into film and I had gone into school for some, uh, I went into school for teaching first, but then I. I went and I started taking some film classes. I was watching a lot of Film Riot. I don't, I don't know if you're aware of yeah, that yeah. Uh, YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. They were dope. And uh, I would just go to Blockbuster all the time, like especially throughout uh, my high school years. I would go to high, uh, Blockbuster so much and, you know, being like wanting to work at a Blockbuster to be that guy who recommends movies to other people. I thought it was the dopest thing in the world. Then they closed <laughs> <laughs> by the time that I, I could have applied. So uh, at that point, I was still watching a lot of movies in theaters. And... I remember it was like 2013 and I had just gotten this thing called Movie Pass as well, which coincided with it that allowed me to watch a lot more movies. And this thing was just starting. And I decided, you know, if I'm watching so many movies already, why not just document my thoughts? And I had seen several of the channels that were like sprouting up because of it. So I started my, my YouTube channel. And I mean, you can go all the way back and see those videos of just me sitting in the corner of my room just talking about movies. But like my biggest plan for it was always that I wanted to make a movie. And I would see so many people around me because I was already taking some film classes, right? That I would see the people who had already graduated, right? Like I'm right at the beginning taking the initial classes, but the people who had finished the classes, uh, I had seen their stuff. And it wasn't like in terms of quality that I was looking at. It was in terms of like, yo, no one has seen it though. You know what I mean? I had thought you get the degree, right? Like in every other profession, you get the degree and hopefully there's that job available and boom. All those eight years, you're a doctor, you're a psychologist, you're an accountant, whatever it is. But in movies, you get the degree. Hopefully, what you're making along the way are connections. Because at the end of it, you can make the greatest movie in the world. But if nobody watches it, what was the point? And I had seen so many people make these movies, but they had no audience. And I was like, oh, that sucks, right? Like, how do we get people to watch these movies? And I, and I realized, well, YouTube is a free platform where you can build an audience especially when you're talking about movies. So you build this audience that sees eye to eye with you with the same movie opinions. So what better way to build an audience to watch and critique your movie once you make one? So are you still working towards that? Have you made any movies? I made a couple of shorts and I've worked on a couple of uh, different stuff uh, throughout the years. And there's like one big project that we're trying to work to kind of like make a bunch of short films and gather a bunch of like uh, directors that we have locally in the area. But there's just a specific number that I want to hit before we start that. So like I'm definitely always writing and stuff. But in terms of like fully getting into that, not yet because I'm still like building as gotcha. I see it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So I, I saw your Cobra Kai Let Me Explain video, right? I don't think it was an A to Z. So let me explain. And Yeah, it was. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed your points. I really enjoyed the show. And I was like, Hey, would you be up for talking to me about it? I think it might be fun. And you said, yes. So, I mean, here we are now. What do you think of the show overall? Did you, uh, I guess before that, what do you think of Karate Kid, the original? I liked it. Uh, obviously I saw them back again, blockbuster days, uh, the first, the second, and I want to say the third one was the one where, um, 
what's her name? Yeah, Hillary Swain comes in. Uh, I don't have the strongest opinions on those, right? Like, those would be ones that I have to rewatch again now. But I remember I was like, oh, they're good. You know, I still remember the karate moves and everyone, you know, all of the iconic stuff, all the iconic lines that come with it. Then I remember when uh, the remake came out with Jaden Smith and watching that in the drive-in. Um, so I wasn't too attached, I would say, to the uh, to the series as a whole. I was aware of it. I, I knew its status. So when, when Cobra Kai came out and people kept recommending it, they're like, hey, you know, you should check this out. I was like, eh, it's Cobra Kai, the YouTube Red Original. What what could it possibly offer? Then my buddy said no. Like, he messaged me at the middle of the night, Snapchatted me. He's like, bro, you need to watch this show immediately. So I did a month later. <laughs> and I remember watching it. And the first episode, I was like, hey, this ain't bad. Second episode, third episode. By the time that I had binged the entire thing in one night, I was like, I, I guess I really, really do enjoy it. Yeah. It's, um, they're what, 22 minutes long. Yes, they breeze. Yeah, it's it only takes like three hours to get through the whole season, but it it's they're so compelling that you just keep going one after the other. I watched them all almost in one sitting. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, the um, I really enjoyed Johnny Lawrence's character, William Zabka. Yes. The it's it's something that's not in media a lot anymore. It's not in TV shows. It's not in movies where you have. The flawed main character, who is clearly flawed, who has many issues and is not politically correct. Like, I think I saw this. I started watching Cobra Kai right around the time I saw Ready Player One, and I hated Ready Player One. the The characters oh. were so boring and so self righteous. Isn't quite the right word, but so perfect that yeah. they you you just can't relate to him. And then you watch this where he's you know, broken and flawed and angry and bitter and just like... You get it. Yeah. And it's just, you connect to it so much more. And I just really appreciated that they they went that route where sometimes in shows you can have a flawed character, but everyone else is flawed, similar to like Always Sunny, right? The main mm-hmm. cast kind of is all evil on the same level. Or in Friends, everyone's kind of equally the same. This, everyone seemed to have different layers and they felt more realistic but no i i really enjoyed their willingness to be more dark and more politically incorrect with his character what did you think going into it what was your your expectations were really low yeah i mean i just i I didn't really understand i figured that oh youtube red picking it up i guess it's because it didn't have you know and i like i I post my stuff on on youtube so it's like nothing against youtube but with youtube red being such a new service but this being such an old franchise that i i figured was more established i figured them going the uh youtube red route i was like i guess netflix hulu didn't like the show so i was like i guess i guess this is like i guess i was seeing youtube red as like a even more straight to dvd type of thing so i wasn't expecting much yeah, they because uh, at that time they had what minefield, barely anything. Yeah, it was just like glorified YouTube shows that were already out there, just with a bit of a bit better production. Um, they had a couple of doc documentaries. I know that like the Demi Lovato one and stuff. Or a couple of like the uh, Smosh <laughs> movies and stuff like that. Yeah. So I remember Laser Team came out on YouTube Red originally, mm-hmm. and that was good. Yeah. But that was all produced yeah, that, by Rooster Teeth. That one had a theatrical release. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, no, YouTube Red was always kind of a joke. Like, it never seemed like it should go anywhere. And then when I saw the trailer for Cobra Kai, I was like, oh, this looks really good. And then I saw it was on YouTube, and I, similar to you, I was like, oh, this is this is probably not going to be very good. The, mm-hmm. I, I expected for um, Daniel LaRusso to come in and be the good guy. I thought it was going to be one, two episodes of Johnny Lawrence being the main character, and Daniel being the somewhat bad guy and then kind of taking over the show. And I was glad they Mm -hmm. didn't do that. Although I felt like at the end, they kind of did. They kind of gave up on Johnny being the the character that you care for. And they're like, you know what? We know you actually really just care about Daniel. So we'll get back into that. I mean, I thought they did a good job at at, uh, balancing them. Mm -hmm. Like at first, I thought that they were going to make Daniel LaRusso like just like this overbearing like bad guy. Yeah. Then you see it's like, oh, he was the good guy or like like the guy who made it well. Yeah. Then look at his kids. He doesn't know how to fully 
uh, parent, one of them, who's just like always being disrespectful <laughs> to them. Yeah. The daughter who's trying to do her own thing. And, you know, he's not ready for that because what he's supposed to do, karate chop his daughter, he can't. But then you realize, like, he's got his support system there. His wife, who's always been there guiding him. He's also, like, uh, at work, he may feel like the boss, but they're a bunch of buffoons because he's hired, like, a bunch of his family members who think they work for the mob or something. So I thought that was interesting when you when you start seeing that and how he recognizes that he himself makes mistakes. Like when he wants to go, um, when he wants to buy the dojo and his wife's like, are you, what are you 12? (laughs) (laughs) I, uh, when I was watching, I was, I realized what they're kind of doing was if Daniel in the first movie had ended up at Cobra Kai and Johnny Lawrence had ended up with Mr. Miyagi, how that would have played out. And I feel like that's Mm -hmm. what they kind of did with, uh, Miguel and, uh, Rudy, Rudy, what's his name? Rory. Rudy, uh, oh. uh, Robbie. I knew I was close. The uh, William Zabka's son in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, they they kind of like, because Miguel was like soft and innocent when he showed up to Cobra Kai, which is kind of what Daniel was in the first movie. And Robbie was more, you know, rough around the edges and a tough kid who got softened out by Daniel which w- it would have been reversed from the original story, which I thought was a cool concept, but I, I didn't like all the connections that they were making throughout the show where you had a love interest and um, the father and son angle. There was like five or six different connections, uh, points of conflict that they're forcing into this group of five, six characters. And when they all came crashing down, it felt very forced. Yeah, I can see that. What did you think of the Miguel character? Uh, his protege? Yes. I liked him. I liked his whole thing when it came to like his mom. Obviously having like a certain path where she's like, no, my son's not going to go down this route that perhaps that's why the father isn't there. I like how the grandma's like, no, I see potential in there. But that was like a an, an interesting view when it came to that. Especially when you see him like interacting with his friends. Hmm. And it shows you how, like, technically he can fall at any point of the spectrum. But the moment that he decides to sit at one certain table at school. Now, for me, you know, I've never I've never been a part of that cliche in my high school. It was never like that. The um, uh, you sit at a certain table and now that's you type of mentality. Uh, but. Yeah, that like he said, he sat with, I guess, what would be considered the losers and all of a sudden he's a loser. But yeah, I thought, he, I thought he was an interesting character, especially when it came towards the second half of the season where it's like, this is really what he was relying on in the same way that in the originals, uh, going to that dojo and learning was what they relied on. That was their escape. Yeah. What did you think about his turn in the last two episodes? When he goes insane? When yeah. he starts like, <laughs> when he thinks he's a vigilante? Yes. Uh, I thought, again, that was that's what surprised me so much about this show. It's not like all of the acting is perfect. Mm. It's not like all the cinematography doesn't feel like, you know, any of the other CW Lifetime shows with like how overblown the lighting is and stuff like that. But they give you like relatable characters where this kid isn't just like the, oh, I'm going to be nice the whole time. They show you kind of what like uh, those theories of uh, LaRusso or with the first one that what happens when you get so much power, sometimes it gets to your head. What do you what do you think about political correctness in movies? Do you think there's a place for that? I think there's a place for absolutely everything in movies. I think uh, when you go into there was I know a recent discussion of people bashing Mad Men, uh, mainly because of what it like covered, and I'm like I don't think at Mad Men at any point was telling you that an alcoholic uh, cheating businessman is a good thing. It yeah. was just dissecting that specific story for that specific time. Yeah. But a lot of people were seeing it as like, well, if you enjoy Mad Men, you're for that. I don't agree with that. You know what I mean? I think we watch, we can watch horrors and thrillers and slashers and uh, even, you know, crazy karate kicking kids. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're for them. Right. Yeah. Uh, it just means that it's anyone can have an interesting movie, an interesting story. And uh, to avoid that progression, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't think is a is a good thing. That's not to say that there aren't movies that are maybe overly political, politically correct, or or uh, the complete opposite, where they just do something <laughs> without having like any sense of like, ah, that's a no, man. Like, wh- where are you going here? Who wrote this? Yeah, um, like Thirteen Reasons this Why. One, this, a little bit, yeah. This one did surprise me. That one scene where he's like uh, making fun of the kid with the nose or with the lip. Yeah, uh, Eli um, Hawk. 
a little bit I was like, oh, we're just going here. You know, at, at what point is he is is this an actual character talking about a kid's lip thing? And at what point is this like a grand message that the show is trying to tell us? Yeah. About like how everyone's politically correct. Um I mean by the end of it, I guess the kid, I guess what it's telling you is that the kid uh was able to recognize that people's words shouldn't affect them. That's how he was born, and some people aren't always going to like him. And I guess there's that. You know, some people confuse someone being respectable with the idea that, well, not everyone's going to like you. Yeah. I guess a lot of people don't get that, you know? Yeah, we want everyone to be nice, and not everyone's going to be a racist or a bigot, but some people will just not like you. And I think we live in a world where everyone just wants to be liked, and we we get upset when uh, some people just will not like you. And I guess that's the lesson he was teaching that kid is like, yo, some people are not going to take the time to look at your lip and realize what it is. They're just, they're going to go directly and make fun of you. I want to make sure that you can defend yourself and you don't get bullied like you have the past, what, seven years of school. Yeah. I, uh, I really like, I thought that was a good message of he was giving them confidence, even in their weaknesses. Like, use it use it as a shield like who cares get over it move past it and they were yeah they were they were getting stronger like the his character johnny lawrence he didn't have any idea of what he was doing he was just copying what everyone did to him growing up Mm -hmm. like he i don't think he thought about you know like oh if i if i bully this kid he's gonna be better for it i think he just was like oh you just bully people he's doing he remembered yeah. yeah but I thought the message was good of, you know, giving them confidence and the confidence is what helps them through their life. But mm-hmm. in the end, they all turn into the bad guys. They all turn all into, it. yeah, they all turn into these jerks who are, you know, beating people up and intimidating people and, you know, like getting back, getting revenge, which isn't really a good message. Like it seemed like the message went too far and, it went from defending yourself to becoming the actual bully. Yeah. And it's a it's fine a, for story-wise, but I think the message gets muddled between the two things. Because it's almost... You mean in, in terms of like how the show itself, what it's saying? Yeah. Yeah. So what the show is saying is almost, if you're mean to kids, they're going to be mean to others, which probably true. But it... it was confused with giving them confidence makes them stronger but being stronger makes you a bad person and that's where it was like oh what i think that i think so i'm one of those like when i see again going back to to that question that you had asked when i see a show do something like that let's say cobra kai for example that, that you have a character like johnny who goes this route of discipline right and he's like mean to them yeah right and some people they they there's that mentality there's parents who say don't ever be mean to your kids and then other parents who say no you have to be uh, strictly uh, disciplining yeah so when he does that and those kids become bullies i don't think like that's the show saying to you as a parent see this is what's going to happen i think that's just what happens to those particular characters because i would say and i, I can't remember her name but the uh the, the girl of the group alicia who joins early on yeah I, I wouldn't say she becomes a bully you know what i mean uh yes and no because at the end she's like wrecks the party but she does it because they're being jerks so it was like not mm-hmm. not so bad but yeah she wasn't like punching people in the face like uh miguel <laughs> miguel was yeah when he was just and then he what he ends up like duking the girl yeah he misses and punches oh. her right in the face yeah the um yeah i don't know it's i i really i i love the whole series until the last episode the last episode kind of soured it for me the uh-huh. what about it the the change in perspective, um, Daniel became kind of the hero and Robbie became kind of the star and Miguel became, you know, the villain and Johnny Lawrence was still sympathetic, but he's like recognizing, oh, I, I really screwed up. And then at the mm-hmm. very end, when his original sensei shows back up, hiding in the shadows, smoking a cigar, I was like, oh, this is a cartoon now. Like this is, yeah. this is just dumb. I guess I saw it as a cartoon from the beginning, I guess. But yeah, was is, uh, the sensei at the end, is that his dad? No, that's the original sensei from the first Karate Kid movie. Okay. He was the one who yeah. was, so he like beat up Johnny a few times for yeah. losing. And he f- tried to fight um, Mr. Miyagi. He told him to like attack the leg and do all this different stuff. He was like mm-hmm. the real bad guy in the first movie. Yeah. 
where Johnny was more kind of caught in the middle of things. So what I think is going to happen for the next season is he's going to take back over Cobra Kai and Johnny's going to work with Daniel and they're going to balance that's, stuff out. Yeah, that's exactly what I think is going to be. That's, uh, that's what I think exactly they're going for. And their, their chemistry is great. The scene in the mm-hmm. bar when they're sitting there talking about, you know, being in high school and stuff, that felt like just two friends catching up. Like that felt really authentic. Yeah. But yeah, no, for this being a YouTube Red series, I thought it was way better than it should be. Yeah, I'm surprised. They even got some other ones right afterwards. I was like, I gotta check some of these other ones. I, there was a show called Impulse, and I was like, you know what? YouTube Red might just be going up there. The Cobra Kai, I don't know. I think that's, is there anything else that you have to say about it? No, other than if you got YouTube Red, definitely check it out and uh, let us know your thoughts. Where can people find you? You can find me at the A to Z show on Twitter. Usually I'll be posting there on Twitter. If Instagram's your thing, definitely there. Or just over at the A to Z show on YouTube. And that'll link you to like all the other stuff that I that I do. Well, man, thanks for doing this again. I really appreciate yeah, sure. it. Um, you can follow us at I Seen That Pod on Twitter. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of days.